Hello and welcome to the episode of today's Talking Point. We are very privileged and honored to have MP Roshan Ali, a Shadow Cabinet Minister, uh, at their studios. She is, she represents Bo and Bethnal Green, Bethnal Green and she created history in 2010 when she was the first Bangladeshi uh, Bangladeshi British to be elected to the Houses of Commons, the British Parliament. Welcome to the show Thank and you we are privileged and honored and that you. you could brave the weather today <laughs> after a long battling performance at the House of Commons. How are you? Very, very well, thank you. Uh, would you like to tell us and our viewers about your political journey and uh, in this process who inspired you, maybe your family, your peers and your colleagues and what is your political philosophy? What do you want to achieve in East End of London, yeah. which is your home? I didn't call you daughter of East and daughter of East London, but that's what you are mm -hmm. to most of us, and we are proud to have you here. Well, thank you. That's a great privilege uh, uh, to have such a description uh, associated uh, with me. I uh, was brought up here in the East End. Uh, I came here um, at a very young age from mm -hmm. Bangladesh uh, with my family to the East End of London, and I got interested in politics because of this area, because I grew up watching people who were very talented, mm -hmm. um, not being able to... Uh, but not being represented in the uh, uh, political field, or what? Well, I grew up watching people fail in school mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't have the opportunities that they should have done, mm -hmm. uh, and people who never got the chance to uh, get the jobs that they could have got. Um, mm -hmm. Many, many challenges and struggles that people faced mm -hmm. uh, across the different communities, including the Bangladeshi community, which is much more established now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, from a very early age, I felt very, very strongly about the fact that people were being left behind uh, here in the East End. And that's what inspired me to go into politics. Mm -hmm. In terms of who in particular inspired me, um, my family, my parents, particularly mm -hmm. my mother, who was a great source of strength mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. um, who was uh, pretty strict. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, school teachers mm -hmm. um, uh, were very well, inspirational. Where, where did you go to school? In I went to Mulberry East? School mm -hmm. and then I went on to uh, Tower Hamlets College. And mm -hmm. I was very lucky. I had some incredible teachers, incredibly inspirational teachers. Mm -hmm. There were also a number of youth workers who were involved in, in the school and the college. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so lots of wonderful people who made learning uh, fun and exciting and inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's really important. When I go to schools now, I see that. I see some incredible teachers. I see, you know, very confident young men and women uh, who, um, you know, who who I believe will do well, and mm -hmm. I see their ambition uh, in the way they um, they are in their schools, uh, the way they are in their interactions with me. And I think, you know, we're in a much better place than those days, but there are still massive challenges uh, that we need to we need to confront. Right. So, so that you know, in terms of where where would I like like. Um, uh, things to go. I think there are big issues for uh, this part of London in mm -hmm. relation to unemployment, which I've been campaigning on mm -hmm. uh, for some years, uh, and I've been challenging the current government as well as the local uh, um, mayor of Tower Hamlets and the council to do more to get people into work, into training. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because in the end, we're going to only be able to tackle child poverty, which is one of the highest in the country, right. in this area, if we get people into work, if we right. make sure the talent we have in this but area that, we have is, to have is addressed. Yes, but we do. You know, mm -hmm. we have many, many young people who are now graduates who are struggling to get work. So uh, we have to ask the question, why is it that they are not getting jobs? There are others who have done their A-levels, who um, are looking for apprenticeships and looking for training opportunities, and they're not getting those opportunities. And the <laughs> onus is up to the national government to make sure there are more uh, places for apprenticeships. Um, there's one, uh, uh, sorry, 10 young people chasing every single apprenticeship opportunities. Yep. Well, that needs to change. And that's where the, the local authority could do more as well. Ten in, one in ten 
is on unemployment benefit in, in this area particularly. Unemployment is very high. Youth unemployment is, long-term youth unemployment has ri risen by 141% in, yes. this, in this borough alone. And that's because the Conservative-led government has made a choice, which is to take money away from the kinds of programmes that would help generate work. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't created growth. They've prioritised giving tax breaks to millionaires instead of into uh, programmes that would expand the apprenticeship programmes get more people into work through uh, opportunities for young people. That's my priority. That's what I want to see a Labour government do. Uh, and I hope we get elected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to form a gov government in 2015 so that we can concentrate on getting people into work. Yeah, but they're spending £2,000 to bring back people to employment and, and spending that. But Labour, I, I was reading today, Labour is spending, I think, uh, much more. That well, well, yes, when the recession kicked in in 2007, the Labour government under Gordon Brown made it very absolutely a priority to keep people in work and get people in t back into work and get young people into work. We invested a billion pounds into the Future Jobs Fund and mm -hmm. many young people in places like Tower Hamlets were able to work and get opportunities as a result of that. As soon as the Conservative-led government came into power, they abolished it. Mm -hmm. And then there was a delay of about a year before the new program was established. Now, despite that, there are 950,000 young people out of work in this country. A sizable number of people are out of work in this borough. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a very high level of youth unemployment. So you have to ask, uh, why is it that the government's programs are, are not reaching um, people in Tower Hamlets? That's what um, I believe that we should be uh, challenging the government on. That's what I and my party, the mm -hmm. Labour Party, are campaigning on mm -hmm. both locally to make sure that the council and the mayor of Tower Hamlets prioritises that because national government provides some support to local government to do some of this work. There's a budget of close to a billion pounds. Um, some of that, some of the powers that the local authority has can be used to get more people into work, local people into work. And the national government needs to do more. Uh, the Conservative-led government needs to do more to create job opportunities, to create growth in areas like the East End of London. One well, final well, thing, one good. final thing I would say about the East End of London is there are many, many job, thousands of job opportunities now mm -hmm. in Canary Wharf in terms of the legacy uh, of the Olympics. There'll be thousands of jobs coming. There is Tech City. There's um, also something called iCity, which is going to create a lot of media jobs and mm -hmm. technology jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the creative industries, the arts sector. All of that has historically generated work and uh, also there's enterprise. Now, what we need to do is make sure that young people in particular, but any, anyone who's out of work, um, is given support and training, rapid, intensive quick training to help them get into those jobs mm -hmm. because it's not like we're short of those opportunities on our doorsteps mm -hmm. but we need to make sure the training's available to people that's where the local authority can come in and do more and other agencies can come in and do more London government needs to do more but we also need the employers the big employers in the Canary Wharfs and the City of London and the that's London Legacy of, Development that's, part of and Eastern, so on. Isn't it? that's right all these agencies that are there who have the jobs they need to reach out to our populations but we have to meet them half Way. And that's some of the, those are the, some of the things I've been working on, working with Ed Balls, the Shadow Chancellor mm -hmm. in my party, um, to make sure that it, despite the fact that we're in opposition, we keep the pressure on the government to make sure that they actually that's, act. That's Otherwise, too many, too many years get wasted. People's lives get wasted. Um, that's what we, we are focused on. Unfortunately, my party is in opposition in, in, uh, nationally. Um, I hope we return to power in 2015 so we can get on with the job of getting people into work in areas like the East End. My party is also not in power in Tower Hamlets Council, we so are. we call on the uh, Mayor of Tower Hamlets to do more to help get people into work because they control the budgets. When you say your party has not, is not in power, that's right. but you have been in power uh, in, in recent past. So yes, that's right. And, and this entire area... Yes, got transformed has, because yes, we were this in power. Area has, is traditionally Labour supporter. That's right. And when we were in power, we invested uh, a billion pounds in the Royal London Hospital. That's why mm -hmm. you have a brand new hospital. That started, that work started in the late 90s. We invested through the health service. We spent hundreds of millions of pounds in uh, buildings, in the building schools for future. So every yeah, but, school... But you were every, in power until let me, 2010. Let, yes, I'm giving you... And, and, and it's only two years. 
No, so but what I'm wrong, saying, Dad. no, 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 I, let, me, let me explain. Between 1997 and 2010, the Labour government invested in healthcare, in education, which is why up and down this borough there are brand new schools. That's because we chose to invest money in schools like my former school, which had leaking roofs when I was studying there. It has brand new buildings, Central Foundation School, Sir John Cass School, uh, Morpeth School. I can name school by school what we did to transform those schools, not just the buildings, Mm -hmm. but also the results. That was on the gov Labour government's watch. We were in power nationally and locally. We improved schooling. We invested record amounts of money into healthcare to improve the quality of health. Now, there's much more work that needs to be done because there are chronic issues that need to be addressed. Finally, on housing, we invested hundreds of millions of pounds to improve the quality of housing to bring them up to decent standards. By the time we uh, left power, half the properties were brought up to decent standards. When we inherited, uh, uh, when we took over in 1997, most of the properties in Tower Hamlets were in poor condition. Many you, families were you, suffering. You were in power for a long time. Yes, and the point is, if you take a look, if you take a walk, time walk from 1997, when we inherited poor housing, poor education, uh, um, uh, poor quality of school buildings, where people had to suffer the, uh, uh, the um, poor conditions mm -hmm. of classrooms. When I was at Mulberry School, let me be clear, and this is the experience of many young children, uh, young people who grew up of my age and my generation, it wasn't uncommon to be put in porter cabins because there was too many students mm -hmm. and the quality of the classrooms were um, not very good. But did you have enough number of teachers? Because if you were put into porter cabin, you would need another teacher. The point is, up until 1997, there was very little investment in the infrastructure of schools and hospitals in this country. When we took over, after 18 years of conservative government rule, we had to upgrade and improve the systems of education and health. That's what happened in Tower Hamlet. That's why you have the quality of schools that you do now. That's why you have record improvement in education in our um, borough. That's not to say there is not much more to do. There is, and I've talked about employment because since the recession, the um, in the last over the last five years, unemployment has gone up further. Now. Tower Hamlets, as a borough, and Bethnal Green and Bow, my constituency, has historically had faced disadvantage. What I'm saying is, in the 13 years we were in power, we transformed the borough mm -hmm. in health, in education, in work, in housing, but the problem has been in housing, for instance, um, despite the building, house building programs, the, the demand is very high. But what I tell you is people need to just look at the number of properties that have been built, affordable and social housing, it's in the tens rather than the hundreds and, and but, but, thousands. But the population uh, has gone up too, isn't it? But the population has gone up too. So you need more housing. Well, there are a number of pressures on Pe housing. People First of all... People have moved away from well, the borough. Well, well, there are two issues. One is that uh, investment in housing, uh, in social housing, has historically been neglected. Where over a number of years, Labour in power tried to change that uh, focus, mm -hmm. but it took a long time for us to convince the public that uh, council housing and social housing and affordable housing, especially in London where the cost of housing is so high, is important to invest in because uh, people need decent affordable homes. Now that took a long time to get the public behind in order to build more housing. By the time we left power, that was happening more and more, but for the demand that's there in a place like Tower Hamlets, uh, supply hasn't caught up. Since we lost power, this government has made a decision not to build uh, um, public housing of the scale that we've seen in the past. But they're still um, building? Uh, no, they're not actually. Then They're building very little that is in the form of affordable or, or social housing. Mm -hmm. The second thing they're doing is they are increasing the cost of housing. They are saying that um, housing associations uh, can in, uh, charge rents up to 80% of market rate. That okay. makes it not affordable. That's a serious issue for many people this, in our this in is constituencies serious, like mine. Yes, I agree that with you. is a policy choice made by the Conservative government because they don't believe that people should be given support uh, in housing. Now, what we know is that that's going to risk creating homelessness. Right. On this very encouraging note, we'll have to take a break. 
which is again bread and butter for us. So we take a break. Thank you very much. Don't go away. Apnara Dixin, Talking Point.